G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video and here we go with some more daily race action. So I jumped into the daily races again a few days ago and this is the event that occurred. Um, it's Red Bull Ring in Group 2 and we all know that the 2016 Group 2 cars are the meta but as you can see right here, I've gone for the non-meta. In fact, I've probably gone for one of the least meta Actually, probably not the least, it'd be the Epson NSX, wouldn't it? Would be the most deadly car, but I've gone for probably the second most deadly car is the Lexus Group 2 model from 2008. The Lexus Patronus Toms SC430, the 2008 uh, GT500 car. But let's go, I've gone from the back, I did maybe 10 minutes practice and put in a quick qualifying time and yeah, it was a crap qualifying time and I started at the back of the grid anyway, so <laughs> really not much to write home about there. But basically what I'm going to do is basically trying to get a podium. I think if I can get a podium from near the back of the grid, I've done good enough. And I think it is possible, but it will be very difficult given the uh, circumstances here. But we're just going to make sure we get through turn three cleanly. Car goes very wide and we're going to try and get up the inside. He's disappeared from behind me and he's actually grinding on the barrier. So we've made up one position there. We're starting on the medium tyres, which is the harder of the two tyre compounds that we have to use for this race. And of course, being at the start of said race, they are, they are very cold. So not much grip up for offer at the start of the races here so we are going to have to just make sure we keep this car in check and it's a very difficult car to do so this car has very little downforce in terms of group two and um, therefore it's actually pretty leery on the throttle especially coming out of turn one uh, turn three and turn four the rest of the corners are okay um, but we know red bull ring is plagued with curb glitches all over the shop. There's one on the exit of turn seven onto turn eight. There's a curb glitch and even in the exit of the final turn. Just here on the exit, the curb there has a glitch on it as well and it can just throw your car up without any warning whatsoever and spear you into a barrier. So let's avoid that. But coming into turn one, look up the inside here and I'm just out of practice and completely missed the braking point and smash it up the inside of a couple of cars there actually namely the o uh, the 16 lexus that's now up in 14th we've lost positions out of that and nobody actually died so that's fine back down into last we'll just treat it as a 13 lap race now coming up into here i bump the back of the honda and then as he's getting on the power he spins out unfortunately we are going to see a little bit of that i was sort of struggling with the braking up into turn three there and I ended up bumping a couple of cars, and I have left it all in the footage here that you're going to see. Um, so there's no hiding what I've done. I'm not sure. It's such an awkward thing there. It's like you b bump into someone, and then they end up wider than they normally do, and then they end up losing it on the curb on the exit. Like, is that my fault? It's a really big question mark. It's obviously my fault if I smash them wide, but if they then follow, if they then go on to lose control. Whose fault is that? But coming into here, I've got to go around the outside of Shane. But then I had another car on my left that was just forcing me, sort of, I was running out of road and I was about to smash into Shane. It all got very awkward. He ended up spearing into the grass. I think that's just a racing incident. I had nowhere to go. He didn't leave me any space to go and try and avoid Shane. And he ended up um, coming off um, second best in that particular instance but we're up in 12th we're going to fast forward through to the final turn let's see if we can get a good exit here we do but then on the curb bang we've got that glitch and we've just smashed it into the barrier and got a penalty a 1.5 second penalty as the cherry on top so that's exactly what i'm talking about like i was square on the curb the car was gripped up nicely and i've gone deep here the tires have just been overheated um, because of the sliding across the circuit as i spun out but yeah, I'm going to have to serve this penalty now, and the penalty serving zone on this track is on the exit here as we almost spin out for a third time there, and thankfully no extra penalties, but that's what happens is spin out, the tyres all scrub up and it just overheats the tyres and you end up with a sharp drop off in grip. Once the tyres cool off a little bit again, you get grip back. But we were in last for a while, but then Shane had binned it, unfortunately, on the exit of Turn 1. And we managed to get that position up into 16th. And that brings us to the end of Lap 6, which is going to be our in-lap. Um, we'll see how we go. I wasn't really sure when I was going to pit. I'm not sure how long the soft tyres last, which is the compound we're changing onto now. 
I really wasn't sure how long they'd last, but a couple of other cars on the mediums went in at the end of lap six. I was like, you know what, whatever, we'll give it a go. This race has gone down to the toilet, so if it ends up being too early anyway, um, we at least uh, aren't really risking too much. We're not really throwing too much away. I'm going to fast forward all through this outlap. We're going to come past the pit lane again and see if there's any positions that we manage to jump in the pits because it's been a fairly okay outlap uh, until this point where we lose it on the curb again. Just getting too much oversteer and then it gripped up as I tried to correct it on the curb and yeah, really. <laughs> I've just completely binned it again and we are down in last position. There's nobody I'm about to jump in the pits unfortunately so that is that. Um, somebody disconnected, so we're up into 16th, but unfortunately for Shane, he's binned it on the exit of turn 1 again. We're up into 15th out of 16 remaining cars. Penalty to be served up ahead, and then on the exit of turn 3, he's going to serve that penalty. That's Lego Wheels 1. We're going to get past him fairly convincingly up the inside, heading down into the braking zone for turn 4, and we're just up behind Daddy Shark. At this point, we're going to be looking to get the move done here. You can overtake into turn 9, uh, the Rint Corner, it is called. You can overtake into there. So we're just going to be aiming to get a very good exit through turn 7 and 8. And we are fairly close to the back of him here. Grab the slipstream. We look up the inside of turn 8. We're on the soft tyres. So we're going to send it down the inside. We're going to run side by side through here. Small amount of contact, but he's left some room on the exit, so that's fine. Okay, heading through the final corner a little bit wide. So we just drop to a second gear. And then Daddy Shark, unfortunately, runs wide also. Um, it goes four wheels beyond the kerb. And uh, he may get a penalty for that. I'm not too sure whether he does. But let's just see if we can get through turn one okay. He catches up a lot of ground under braking. But on the exit, he loses it. Again, gets a little bit squirrely on the curb on the exit. But coming up into turn three this time. Look down on the radar. Someone's come spearing in from two cars back. And I've ended up once again... Um, second best there and I've been reset back onto the track to be fair to him he does wait up so look it is what it is obviously just a mistake on his behalf there but at the end of the race we bring it home in second last position actually somehow got up into 14th we didn't overtake anybody did we not sure whether there was a penalty but there was no car immediately ahead that we could have jumped with a penalty unless he had a 30 second penalty but it is what it is I guess 14th still not great Somehow still up two positions, so there we go. We had car number three there, unfortunately, so losing quite a bit of DR in the process, but let's have another go, even so. So with that race out of the system, we'll call out the practice race for getting up to speed in this absolute death trap of a machine, and that's something I learned quite quickly, is be bloody careful on the curbs, because this car, it actively is pursuing to kill you, and we're just going to make sure we can just keep it nice and steady on the curbs. But let's start this next race. We're up in 13th this time. I think there was a slight improvement in the qualifying time. So we're up slightly higher in the grid. Shane is wide on the exit of turn one. So he's struggling with turn one. However, um, here we are at the start of the race. So the tyres are cold. Speaking of cold tyres, we're going to see um, the turn three. It's going to be very difficult here. And I found that I was really struggling on the brakes. As you can see, we run into this gap here. And smash Gondria. A little bit wide. We're just holding off, but he spun. Man, that's awkward. <laughs> it's really difficult. I mean, is the spin my fault? It's obviously my fault that I dived him. I was, I was actually trying to let him go, but then he ended up spinning, and I was like, oh, man, look, I'm not ruining an entire 30-minute daily race because I made a mistake. Shane runs deep, trying to go around the outside. There was no contact there, so um, that's unfortunate for Shane, but we've, um, he hasn't been able to make that position up. Someone bins it on the final turn. We managed to get that move convincingly up the inside, giving him a wide girth. And we're up into 10th. But yeah, the incident at turn 3, so awkward. Because I don't know, I smash someone wide, but then they end up spinning it on the curb. I mean, is the spin my fault? If I smash them, they immediately spun from the hit by me. I get that. But it's like, I've just smashed them offline, and then while they're getting on the power, they've then spun it. So, I don't know, a little bit awkward. I was trying to let him go, but... You know, I'm not wasting a whole race, sorry. Um, somebody has a mini spin on the exit of turn three. We managed to make that position up. Very awkward. I look behind and there's all of a sudden no cars behind me. So I think maybe there was a bit of an awkward rejoin. And a couple of cars came off second best. Again, on the exit here, someone gets caught on the curb on the exit and spins out. That's uh, quite unfortunate. Very giving me Austrian GP vibes on the curb on the exit of turn four there. But it's all good. We're up behind Broccolili. 
and it took us a little bit to catch up to him. We're on lap four now. We're going to be in his slipstream coming into these final two corners. We gain a lot of ground in turn nine, and then coming into turn ten, we're going to go for the good exit instead of trying to get him on the entry. It's basically impossible to overtake someone on the entry to turn ten. We're going to grab his slipstream up the main straight, pull out to the inside. There's not really much working together in this race, just because it's a daily race and there's not much time to get things done. We actually get that move done up the inside at turn one, which is very good. And then heading up the straight here, it gives me a little bit of a bump draft to give him a flash that has us to say thank you. Just want to make sure he doesn't want to go for the return move. However, he is firmly over to the left-hand side and hangs it back a little bit. I clatter the curb. My rear right tyre just comes over the top of the sausage and it just spins the car out. And then Brock Lilly gets caught in that incident, unfortunately. Um, yeah, again, I think that's just a driving error from me, and I was just trying to catch myself, and unfortunately for Brock Lilly, it was just too close to capitalise and ended up getting caught up. Not really any dirty driving, just another mistake that someone else got caught up in by me. So, unfortunate for Brock Lilly, but no waiting up for that. A couple of people going to the pit lane, so we'll see how many positions we gain up on the exit there. We almost get that uh, spinning out on the kerb. We unfortunately get a penalty for running wide through turn nine. We're up into fifth position at this stage. We're just going to try and shake off a bit of the dirt off the tyres there. And then coming through turn one, let's see if that gap equalises on the exit. We actually remain in fifth position. We're going to serve that penalty in the top straight of this lap. And then by the end of lap seven, a bit of an awkward pit entry, almost running too wide. But we managed to just about bring it into the pit lane. And that is the end of lap seven. So I've gone a lap later. I think I felt as though the tyre wear on the softs on that last lap of the previous race was a little bit too high and I wanted to go for the extra medium tyre lap in that stint so that I could reduce the soft tyre stint by one. And that's exactly what I've done. I've come out in eighth position, so it's not a bad position I've found myself in. I'm in the top ten, and I've just come out on my faster tyre, and there's a good handful of cars. There's three cars just on the exit of this turn, so I'm going to try and get uh, a few clean laps in, and I'm going to do my absolute best to try and gain some positions here and that's exactly what we're going to do because someone's been it on the exit of turn four of this lap on the out lap we're coming through the pit straight one more time on the exit of the final corner i'm up into fifth a few more people have gone into the pits and i can see way up in the distance there's some squabbling at turn one and a couple of cars were going side by side actually someone comes out of the pits just ahead of me so i am in sixth at this particular stage but um, Sajad36, we caught up to him quite quickly. By the end of his outlap, we've caught up to the back of him. So um, either he's struggling with cold tyres or he's come out on the mediums. We'll see uh, how easy this overtake actually is to get as we set our fastest lap for 21.6 in this race. Not too bad, about 7 tenths off the current fastest lap by V8 Nut. But we'll see how we manage to go in this race against Sudjad. He runs a little bit wide on the exit of turn one. Gives us the inside for turn three, the outside for turn two, but it's basically a nothing corner. Coming up into the braking zone for turn three, let's see if he manages to hang it around the outside. I unfortunately just struggle to get the power down a little bit, and I don't, probably perhaps don't quite move to the inside fast enough. That gap is open just long enough for Sudjad to get the more superior grip off the exit of turn three as we go over the crest, which is what makes the acceleration period out of turn three very difficult. And the exit of turn four, he leads on me a little bit. I don't quite make it to the gravel, but I think that was just about fine in terms of cleanliness or a racing move. So solid defense by Sudjad there. We'll see if we can have another crack at him. As we're heading through this middle sector, it's difficult to follow another car in these Group 2 cars as I had, it. had to have a couple of lifts off the throttle to avoid running wide at Turn 7. But we're going to grab his slipstream. Coming into the final couple of corners, we're about two tenths behind, so the dirty air is going to be massive. Coming through there, Sunjad makes a small gain on me, and then through the final corner, we get a very good exit there, actually. So we're going to grab his slipstream. Heading up towards Turn 1, we're going to think about this move again. We've caught up to him quite quickly. And so we're looking up the inside at turn one and on the brakes, we're well up the inside and then he turns into the corner while I'm completely alongside. Now look behind, he's flashing me. I was like, well mate, I was, I was clearly there. Like, sorry, but you know, I was well up the inside. In fact, I think I was ahead at the point where we both turned into the corner and he just turned in too much. Like, sorry mate, but um, it is, that is what it is, unfortunately. So we skip ahead if you manage to catch that, to catch that little jump there as we rounded the corner and all of a sudden we've got a car serving a penalty ahead of us, but it's Yamaha 15. 
We caught up to him in a couple of laps, and he unfortunately was serving a penalty too. So that's just put us up into fourth position. Now 6.1 seconds off the podium with about two and a bit laps to go. And we'll see if we do manage to close that gap any, you know, any portion of distance whatsoever. But given with only two laps, a six second close, it, a six second gap to close up is a very difficult task to do. And you can see we've already broken the slipstream to Yamaha. By the end of the race, we were only able to close that gap to 4.8 seconds to the podium there. So not quite achieving that podium there. Perhaps if we, you know, maybe didn't get the penalty and got a couple of didn't get caught in the battle with um, the car Sudjad and maybe just had a couple of faster, cleaner laps there. We may have been able to do it, but in this particular instance, we only managed to get up to fourth. However, it's still a net gain of nine positions, so not bad at all, even though it was tainted by the lap one, turn three little incident there. But we'll just aim to be avoiding that in this next race here, we're once again behind the driver that we unfortunately nudged off track at the start of the last race, Gondria. So we're just going to make sure that we don't run into the back of him, probably taking a little bit of a more tentative approach on the um, start of this lap here. So it's a little bit awkward with the few cars up ahead. Car darts to the inside and Broccolili is defending very aggressively up in towards turn three. And I get dived by another car um, there. That's all, uh, uh, you know, that, that is what it is. That's fine. A car bins it on the exit there. And we're just going to grab the slipstream of Takari. So thankfully we did not um, smash anyone off the track at turn three. But coming into turn four, we've got a car looking around the outside. This is exactly what we saw in the Austrian GP. And I've just got some understeer and I've nudged him ever so slightly and unfortunately for the other car he has touched the gravel so man awkward again you know it's just so hard uh, on the opening lap with the cold tyres I'm really struggling with trying to judge the amount of grip that the car has and it's really difficult to do and in that particular instance on that I just had some understeer you know it wasn't even full throttle powering to the outside I was just trying to get onto the power as smoothly as possible and turning as much as I can to leave the space but it didn't quite work out on that particular occasion what hasn't also worked out is my sort of addition of lap uh, of turn one on lap two and I've run a little bit wide at turn one and got myself a penalty which I'm going to serve on this same lap thankfully the penalty serving zone is far enough away from turn one that you can serve any penalties you may get in that particular penalty hotspot on the same lap so you don't have to wait an entire lap to endure the very difficult penalty um, serving activity there <laughs> But anyway, let's refocus on the job at hand. We actually have a little bit of a uh, pressure being applied by a player behind. Charlotte is second behind me. It's actually very racy through this field at the moment, so I'm not sure whether they had an incident on lap one and they got put behind me or whether they're actually supposed to be further up the grid and hasn't qualified. But I, f I was really getting caught up very quickly by this Charlotte is second person. So... We're seeing at the moment, we've run side by side through turn three, so very good racing, and we're seeing an example here that these 08 cars actually don't really have the power to match uh, at least the 2016 model Lexus in a straight line. I don't know whether it's just this particular 2008 car, but I definitely found or felt that I didn't really have the power to put down on the straights for some reason. I always thought these 2008 cars, they weren't as great in the corners, but they're better down the straight. I don't know whether there's been a balance of performance adjustment in Group 2, but yeah, I definitely felt I had the power disadvantage. Coming up to Turn 1, they're all caught on the curb there and just as I've gone to avoid it I've spun out and hit the wall on the inside so I think I was just on top of the sort of yellow sausage on the uh, exit of turn one and just as I've gone to turn and steer around the incident ahead of me I've slipped off the edge of the curb and the car has just spun to the inside so I find myself down at the back of the field again pushing very hard and just on the exit of turn seven I just touched the gravel trap on the outside of the curb and I get myself a half second penalty which I'm going to have to serve on this lap. Broccolili has unfortunately binned it on turn three so I make up that position and I serve this penalty on the same lap. Find myself on track once again with Gondria so he's going to be serving that penalty and I'm going to be looking around the outside of turn three or turn four this time and I've managed to keep the car around the outside so successfully defending that position from Gondria there. 
So even though it hasn't been the opening stint that I hoped for, um, we are at least coming up to the phase of the race where pit strategy is about to get itself involved. So we're on lap six, we're just finishing lap six, so it's just about the opening of the pit window for a good few players. And you can see we've passed a couple of people in the pit, so we were in 15th now up in 11th on the exit of turn one here. There's nobody coming out of the pit, so we are officially up into 11th position. However, we've still got a pit stop to do, which is going to be done on the end of this lap. So, as we're exiting turn three, we've got a car that's either made a mistake or... Actually, they have made a mistake. I thought they may have served a penalty, but I realised they found themselves stationary before the penalty serving lines. So, we are now on track with another car, which is not really what I wanted for my in-lap. I wanted to try and see if we can gain any positions um, through the pit phases, which, of course, would have relied on me getting a very clean and very quick in-lap, out-lap compared to the cars that went in earlier, but I'm now battling with Takari, and I can tell that he's slow because I'm getting overlaps through this middle sector, which is almost never possible, and I've just about got the move done at turn seven. I think there was a little bit of contact, but Takari ran wide and did give me the opportunity. So I have lost time on this lap, but at least I got a good little bit of racing there. And uh, this is the end of lap seven, of course, so we're gonna sweep it around to the pit entry. Very strange pit entry here. We actually get a very good pit entry there, keeping a nice high average speed into the um, pit lane, but we're gonna jump onto the soft compound tire again and Come out of the pits and see if we've managed to hold off any of these positions. The answer is no We find ourselves in 15th again. So yeah um, uh, When I found myself on track with Takari, I didn't f I didn't feel like I was gonna be able to keep any positions I may have got one if I got a clean in lap out lap, but yeah not quite gonna work on this particular occasion but we're once again still defending from Takari on the exit of turn three. We get a little bit of a poor exit there, but Takari just about getting getting an exit to match. And he's going to be looking at the outside for turn three or turn four again. We're going to see if we manage to get through here side by side this time. And he's run a little bit wide on his own accord, but doesn't, doesn't catch the gravel trap there. So we're just going to cast our eyes to the gap behind. If we can now break the slipstream, that would be very uh, pivotal there. Uh, evidently we did because we've skipped ahead. We've caught up to this battle here. One, two, three, four, five cars. It only took us a couple of laps on our soft tyres to catch up to this group of five cars. So if we, play, if we play our cards right, potential top ten could be on the cards for this race. So first port of call is Mike A437. Let's see if we can get past him as quick as possible. Passing at Red Bull Ring, it really consists of trying to get a very good middle sector to get closer to a car and then using the straight sections um, as sort of slipstreaming uh, slip spots. He's run wide at turn one, which is a pinch point in these cars. He has grabbed the inside and has not picked himself up a penalty for running wide at turn one. He did lose time, so that's fine. We're going to be looking around the outside of turn three. Very difficult to do, but I do have the soft tyres underneath me. But Mike just about defends that beautifully and has just parked his car right where I wanted to put mine and I'm not quite able to get the power down going up that crest on the exit of turn three. I'm going to grab his slipstream heading into turn four. We have to be really careful not to run into the back of him. As you can see, I just darted to the inside just to try and fill his mirrors with this uh, SC430 Lexus here. Trying to pressure him to a mistake, but it's not quite happened. He thinks about running defensive into the middle sector, but I'm not going to overtake into turn six here. If I'm going to overtake, I would dive in turn seven, as I did on Takari. Um, but he meets that apex nicely, just touching that curve and getting the power down, and slightly earlier than me, in fact. And he's got himself a very good exit, so he's probably just about done enough to defend a potential move into the following corner down here at turn nine. So I think the next opportunity we're going to have is turn one or turn three of the next lap. So as we clatter down the curb on the exit of turn 10, we're going to grab the slipstream once again of Mike. And he's just about once again done enough to just fend me off for turn one. But if we get a very solid turn one, um, we could potentially be able to get a move up into turn three. We get a very squirrely exit off turn one. So once again, not quite close enough to go for a move at turn three. However, Mike has caught up to the back of the car ahead of him, Grey Ghost, and he's looking up the inside for the move. If they can get tangled up in a bit of an incident, I might get myself into or back into the battle. Mike has just had to break early to defend uh, not to defend, sorry, just to avoid from, you know, having a collision with Grey Ghost. And I'm just about in the slipstream of Mike once again. I'm just getting caught behind him. I mean, you can have a look at my lap times. A 121.6, 121.4, 121.8. And then as soon as I caught up to the back of Mike, 123.1. So it's so easy to get caught behind a car here because um, turn one, 
is very situational and then turn three is at the easiest of places to go for the overtake and get a very good exit through here we're going to be looking up the inside at turn seven just trying to pressure him into a mistake he runs wide at turn seven and then on the curb of turn eight we're very close to him at this stage and we're just going to have just the right amount of slipstream as he changes gear just there and i've got myself ever closer and i send it down the inside on the soft tire and i get that move done and dusted nice and easy at turn nine yellow flag is out and gray ghost has run wide we're up into 13th so this gives us another opportunity. Gregos gets a penalty for running wide at turn 10. And we just about get up the inside at turn 1. He completely backs out, actually. We don't even run side by side. I think there's a little bit of lag there. And I end up running wide. And Gregos has spun on the curb behind me. That's very unfortunate. It's very difficult to actually be the defending car at turn 1. Because if you're offline even slightly, the the... You know, you end up ever closer to making a mistake there just because you're not doing what you've normally done in practice. But we managed to get a very nice turn three, and Mike behind has now um, got an opportunity to overtake me with slipstream. So we'll see if he manages to do that. He's going to be looking down the inside at turn four, but he doesn't manage to do it on this particular occasion. But just because we've been caught in this battle, with Mike for a little while we're not able to gain any further positions up the top of the grid and we finish up in 12th. However if we have a look in 6th I think unfortunately Chi Chi 10-10 he does disconnect after finishing the race just before the results are finalised and that's quite unfortunate for him losing that result but it does promote us up into 11th again at the end of the day. But we're up two positions there. Once again, not a fantastic race, unfortunately for me, and I did have door number four, so I perhaps really needed to get a podium in that race just to save my DR a little bit. Um, I was doing these races and I was losing so much DR from just doing these races, and I'm thinking it really is time for a second account, isn't it? A daily race account, and in fact that would probably make for some very good content starting a brand new account at the bottom in a slapper lobby, so that would probably be very interesting couple of weeks as I build that account up. Maybe that's something I should actually just go ahead and do. However, there is the issue of a new name for the second account. However, I do have one in mind that I think a select couple of viewers would appreciate. Um, but we'll see how that story develops. But anyway, that's the end of this video today. I do have another video tomorrow from this combination as we have worked our way to fighting up the front of this field. I have two more races to show you and they are both pretty banging races and you're going to see those at 3 p.m. tomorrow. So set your alarms, set your reminders and check into YouTube at 3 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time um, to tune in to tomorrow's smokescreen phenomenon. But that's going to round out this video today so do hit that like button if you enjoyed and do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me do leave a comment as well questions comments and constructive criticism as always very much appreciated but that's going to be the end of this one today and that means that is it from me so once again i do thank you very much for watching see you later